Today you're going to learn how to rebuild the instance of an object using a gradient and control the direction. So let me prepare everything, go to geometry nodes, hide this, close this, create a new profile, and I'm going to use an icosphere. So I'm going to delete this, press Shift A and search for icosphere and connect it here. Let's make it bigger and add more subdivisions. And let's convert it to instance on points. So instance on points. And let me use as instance cubes. Let's decrease the size, something like 0.2, for example. Perfect. And now what I want, basically, is to make an animation revealing this instance in any direction. Maybe like that, maybe like that, or like this, or whatever direction you want. So what we are going to do is to play with the scale. So we can do an animation like this from 0 to 1. Perfect. But we don't want this. We want to control the direction. But we know we have to play with the scale. So we don't need other nodes. What we can do to create like a gradient, like a direction, is use a node called gradient, gradient texture. And now, if we look at the object, we can see a weird pattern. First, to understand what this is doing, select this node and press Ctrl, Shift, left click, and we get this viewer node. Now we cannot see anything because we need to connect something here in geometry. So we are going to use the main object to see now this node. So basically, this node called gradient is just a simple gradient that goes from black to white, and we have transition. A simple gradient, right? Perfect. To disconnect this, just click here. Okay, but why it looks like that? To fix this problem, just put here a color ramp. And now what we are saying, we want black and white. To update this, really important, connect the output here. It's the same, but now if you make any change, you will see it here. So now we can understand better what is happening. Basically, when it's black, is zero, when it's white, it's one. And in the middle, we have a transition. So that means that here, the scale is zero. And here, the scale is one. And in the middle is the transition from zero to one. That's why it looks like that. And what we can do is to make the transition sharper. If we push this, we are pushing the blacks, so we are making the transition sharper. Actually, we can invert the direction. We can say we want this 1 and here 0. Easy, right? Perfect. OK, but how we can control the direction of this? To control direction, here we have a vector. We know we can use vector to reference a position. So we can control the direction, or well, at least the axis. So let's connect, for example, position. So now it's taking the real position as a reference. However, if we do that, nothing happens, it's the same. Because we need to put something in the middle to make a change and control the direction. For example, what we can do is to put separate axis. And if we do that, now you're thinking, it's the same. Yes, because now it's using x, this one. However, if I want to change this, for example, in z-axis, I can connect the z-axis. So now it's using this gradient in the axis. OK, cool. And I can do the same with the y-axis. But how I can animate this? Now it's really easy. Just put a math node. If we put a math node in that, we can change this value. And we can create this rebuild animation. To see what's happening, connect this, and this is what we are doing, just pushing the gradient. Remember, you can do it in any axis. So, okay, that's really cool. Now you know how to do this animation. Just put some keyframes, later I'm going to do it. But what if I want to do it 
in this direction. That's a problem, right? Don't worry. If you want to do any direction, now we go one step further. So we are going to delete this and we can use an object as a reference. So let's create, for example, an empty, for example, an sphere that have a single point. We can see these lines, but the important thing is the point, the center. So let me bring here, let me select this and bring the empty, the empty information. And if we use the original position and this object, we can control the distance. How? We search for a vector math and we select distance here. And we connect position and here the position, location from this object. Really, really important. Click here. If not, you're going to move this and nothing is going to happen. So activate relative. And now if we connect this here, look, let me put this in zero. And if we click here and move it, something happened here. Okay, we can see it. Let me, let me click here so we don't miss this. But if you click here, look, we have this animation, but if we click this and move it, we can control now the direction. So it's easier. You can put it like that, for example, and just put keyframes here. To create a keyframe, just press I and go, for example, I don't know, 30. And let's increase this something like, like that and press I again. And now if we go to the beginning, we have this animation. And in any moment, you can move this. Look. And if you want, you can do it in the other side. Choose, reverse this. By the way, if you want to make more contrast the transition, just go here and select constant. So we have just black and white, zero and one. So the cut is more sharp, as you can see. That's the difference between constant and linear, where you have a different gradient. And remember, you can apply this to any object. Once you have this set up, you can delete this, for example. And now we're going to use a monkey. So I can drag here the monkey. Let me hide the original object. And let's reconnect geometry to here. And let me just put this here and make it bigger. Maybe I'm going to select the original object. One second, press S and Control A to apply all transform. Now just hide it. And let me add subdivide. So we have more instance and it's the same. We have an object. This is here so we can control the animation. If you enjoyed this video, give a like, subscribe, and you can donate this project and many more in my Patreon. So, see you next video.